Well, hello there, and welcome to another Minecraft tutorial. Before I get started, I want to mention a few things. There will be two announcements coming soon, um, two releases of mine, um, which you'll understand once the announcements come. Um, I'm having a little trouble with my screen recording software when it comes to recording longer videos, uh, which the announcement videos were when I recorded them. It's actually uh, freezing the first three to five minutes of the longer videos. So until I can get that fixed, I can't actually release the announcement video, but it is coming as soon as I fix that problem. Meanwhile, I'm gonna try to record shorter videos that hopefully my screen recording software, which is uh, open broadcasting software, OBS, will not completely destroy. So what do I have here? What I have here is a two output randomizer system. Now a normal randomizer system, a classic design, is just this line right here. So what you have, uh, if I can get down here, what you have is a dropper facing upwards with a 64 stackable item and a non-stackable item. When you trigger this, it's either going to turn that on or not randomly. And that depends upon which item this dropper spits out. So droppers and dispensers in Minecraft are completely random in what they pick, uh, what they decide to actually drop. So in this case, if this drops a shovel or a non-stackable item, it'll drop it up into this hopper, um, which will then spit it back down into the dropper. But for that one tick that the non-stackable item is up here, you'll get an output of three signal strength. And that'll reach this comparator and give you an output. However, if it decides to spit the stackable item, <coughs> excuse me, I am getting over a cold, so I apologize for any coughing that may occur. Um, but yes, so if it uh, chooses the stackable item, which in this case is a redstone torch, it'll only give a signal strength of one, which will not reach this output. So that's a typical randomizer. The problem with that is that the output, whatever it may be, can't tell the difference between um, triggering the randomizer and getting a stackable output or not triggering the randomizer at all. In other words, um, that light is going to be off whether I've you know, clicked this and it just chose that redstone torch or I'm not pressing it at all this output can't tell the difference. And a lot of times you'd want to know, um, well, whether the randomizer has been triggered at all. And, you know, because for example, you don't want it constantly thinking that, that it's chosen this, uh, you know, this redstone torch, even when it hasn't chosen anything yet. So in a way that makes this almost like a one bit uh, randomizer. And you kind of want a two bit randomizer. Now, obviously, I, I'm abusing terms here. This is not actually a two-bit randomizer, as it only has three states. Well, I guess, yeah, okay, sure, it's a two-bit randomizer. Um, but yeah, so importantly, um, the important thing to know is you want to know whether the randomizer has chosen one that is stackable, or it's chosen an item that is not stackable, or it hasn't chosen anything. And with the classic design, you can't tell the difference between non-stackable and nothing chosen. So this design fixes that. And all it is is a simple addition. You run the first redstone dust out of the comparator into another comparator off to the side, and then you run that into another comparator here in subtract mode. And then the second, compar uh, the second redstone dust you run a repeater into another redstone dust and then into this comparator side. So what happens is if it is not choosing anything, both of them will be off. Both of the outputs will be off because nothing has a redstone signal. If you press this and it chooses a button, you know, in this case it chose an item that was stack non-stackable, so this one turned on. Um, and now, in that case, it shows one that is stackable, so this one turned on. Um, and so if I were to hook this up to a redstone clock so it constantly chooses random values, you'll be able to see that it is random. In this case, it shows that three times. 
Um, it shows that one three, four, four times. It shows that one twice. So yeah, totally random output. But you actually can tell whether it's a random output or if it hasn't chosen any output, which is a very nice feature and it's useful for whatever these outputs may go into. Um, right. So the tutorial, like I said, I'm going to try to keep this video as short as I can. And this is clearly something simple. I don't need to rebuild it because you can just look at it right here and see it. As I showed you before, that's a dropper pointing up into a hopper that is facing down back into the dropper. And everything else you can just see from this image, which if I do that, um, yeah, so you can see it. But let me just quickly talk about how this works. So if the signal strength is zero, so there is no item, then none of these get a signal, they're both off. If it chooses a non-stackable item, the signal strength will be, uh, actually let me start over. If it chooses a stackable item, the signal strength will be one, so it'll go through here and into this output, but it won't reach here. But if the signal strength is three, which happens when it chooses a non-stackable item, it'll come through here and have one tick of delay but then it'll also reach here, because three is long enough to reach there, go through this repair and have that one tick of delay, and then come into the side of this and subtract out a full 15 strength signal. And because this delay matches this delay, um, the signals will arrive at the same time, and so it'll just cancel each other out. And then at the same time, this will also reach this output and turn this on, and there's nothing to subtract that out. So it just turns on. So yeah, as I showed, you can have this hooked up to whatever you want. Anything that powers this dropper will choose a random output. So you can have it as a button or a clock. And it works either way. Um, and then these outputs obviously can be hooked up to whatever you want them to be hooked up to. Um, when I was building this, I hooked it up originally to a latch. Um, in case you didn't know, a latch is a memory circuit. Uh, let me just break this because the flashing is annoying me. Um, a latch is a memory circuit where you have two inputs. Um, and if you power one input, then the latch stays on. If you power the other input, the latch stays off. Um, and so I just hook these up, one to the set, which turns it on, and one to the reset, which turns it off, so that the latch would randomly turn on or off, but it'll stay in its last state. And then I hook that latch up to both a piston and a um, and a rail corner. So this minecart rail would randomly decide to flip its its direction. So if you're coming down the mine track or the minecart track, or if someone else on your server is coming down the minecart track, you would randomly get sent in one direction or another depending on what it happened to choose the last time the clock ticked. Um, and then I also hooked it up to a piston uh, or a sticky piston with a block on it so that whether you can jump, you know, like a staircase, whether you can actually jump up to the next floor depends entirely on this randomizer. So. This is good for a lot of mini games, parkour maps, puzzle maps, whatever. Although with puzzle maps, I wouldn't recommend too much randomness because it's supposed to be about puzzle solving, which you can't really rely on randomness for that. But yeah, for parkour maps, for action maps, for adventure maps, for just messing with people on a server, or just for the fun of it, um, this is a good 2-bit randomizer. It has three states. Um, and those three states, of, of course, are that one's on, <coughs> excuse me, or that one's on, or they're both off. And those are your three states, and that means you have two bits of data to work with instead of the one bit of on or off that you have with the classical design. Um, and I think this is pretty compact. My original design was much larger until I realized that I don't actually need to have this output turn this one off because if this output is on then the signal strength would never reach here um, and so with that realization I was able to compact it a lot so yeah that's it 
So like I said, two announcement videos coming as soon as I can fix my recorder. Um, so look out for those. They are both Minecraft related, but not tutorials or series or anything. So um, just I'll let you imagine what it might be. So until next time, keep randomizing, keep redstoning.